Here he is, the one, the only... Howdy, howdy. What have you got lined up for me here tonight? I, uh, well, I, I have, we have a duck, of course, uh, with a secret word on it. Oh, well... Would you bring the duck down? Bring it down. And, uh, if any of our couples, uh, say the secret word, uh, they win an extra hundred dollars. In addition to whatever else they may have. Right. Well, that's very generous of us, don't you think so? Macho Martha Mirror and Bill, uh, Trevilla are standing by. So, Fortune, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word. Martha Mira and Bill Trevilla, huh? Does My that rhyme with Trevilla? Gorilla? No, huh? no, no. No L pronounced. Trevilla rhymes Travia. with Gorilla. No L pronounced. <laughs> what is it? Travia, no L pronounced. Well, that's ridiculous. You wouldn't say Gorilla, would you? <laughs> of course you would. If you were piping a gorilla, you'd say, I saw the biggest gorilla in the zoo. <laughs> that's preposterous. There's no uh, L in your name, huh? Well, no, no L to you, huh? Is that what it is? Thank you. And a happy St. Swithin's Day while you're up there. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> And your name is, uh, your name is Martha Mira, huh? That's right, Groucho. Is it really Mira? It's really Mira. Well, Mira, Mira on the wall. I'll bet you and your husband are having a ball. <laughs> <laughs> and they say poetry is dead in this country, huh? <laughs> How long have you been looking at this Mira? Uh, it's going to be 21 years. Hmm, boy. You're not old enough to have been married 21 years. Well, I'll tell you, I'll give you the statistics. Yeah. I'm 37 years old now. I have six children ranging from one and a half to 20. Mm -hmm. Ranging have, where? Well, they're all over the place, uh -huh. all over the range. And I have two grandchildren. One of my grandchildren is just 10 weeks younger than my own baby. How old are your kids? One and a half, three, 13, 16, 18, and 20. Mm, that's amazing. It's unusual, too. How do you explain the 10-year drought between 13 and two and a half? Very simply. What? We moved to the suburbs. And you've got to have babies in the suburbs. That's very interesting. Part of the lease. Most people, when they go to the suburbs, they get a station wagon and settle for that. We got that, too. Oh. Now, you're Bill Gorilla, eh? Huh? <laughs> Noel. Noel. Well, Noel to you, too, and a Merry Thank Christmas. You. Now, where are you from, uh, Bill? Avalon, Catalina Island. Now, why do you say Catalina and you, and you don't say uh, Travilla? Catalina, why don't you say Cataina? All right, over at Cataina. Yeah. <laughs> My, Were there uh, any gorillas over there? <laughs> there might have been up way back. Yeah. What were you folks doing over there? My grandmother was r running a curio shop, the children being all swimmers and having fun and trying to find a way to have fun and make money. My father became a diver for the glass bottom boat. I later, following his footsteps, became a diver also for the glass bottom boat. You were a junior diver? I was a full-fledged diver. And I would go into the kelp gardens, dive 30 feet beneath the boat. Yeah. I would uh, eat a banana and an apple, do a few somersaults, and then pick up an abalone shell, bring it to the surface. They what kind of baloney was this? This was an abalone. <laughs> and it well, what kind of a baloney is an abalone? This is a shellfish. Oh, it's not a baloney. Oh, no, no, no. Why do they call it a... Why don't you call it a abba -oni? I do. It's an abba -oni. Oh. <laughs> and all the gorillas eat these abba -onis? All the gorillas are kataina. Eat <laughs> the abba -onis. It's a lovely life, really, if you leave the L out of everything, huh? <laughs> After you gave up your career as a diver, what did you, what did you do then, Bill? Well, let's see. I... Started to play, I went down to Mexico, I did a little hunting, like alligators and ocelots and a little wildlife. Uh -huh. And now, now what is your profession now? I now am a dress designer. <laughs> well, that's logical. A man eats bananas underwater, hunts alligators and ocelots, and what else could he be now but a dress designer? <laughs> It's a natural sequence. You're one of those operators that each year lowers the skirts and raises the prices, huh? I'm afraid so. Now, what do you get for your dresses so I'll know where we stand? Uh, in the gift? store, a moderate price of a, from $200 to $1,200. Oui. That's a lot of money for a dozen dresses. That's for one dress, Crouch. $1,200 for one dress? But a very beautiful dress. Now, who are some of the celebrities that you've designed for, Bill? 
Well, I have dressed Joanne Woodward, Greg Arson, Lauren Bacall, Marilyn Monroe, Jean Tierney. In fact, just about any lovely, beautiful screen star that you might mention. You dressed all of those tootsies. Hey, you don't need a partner, do you? <laughs> I have a partner, but oh. there's always room for more. Is there? Yes, sir. Have you ever won any uh, uh, awards for design? Yes, I have the Oscar, the Academy Award. I won this in 1950. And I also hold three Academy nominations. Well, then I better call you by your right name, which is Bill Travilla. Uh, Travilla is the way you pronounce it? Travilla. Travilla. Is Thank that you. Spanish? Or? It's actually Italian. Italian? Oh. Yes. Well, let's return to the suburban life. Uh, now, you say you've been married for how long? 18 years. No, huh? not 18, 20 years. 20 years. <laughs> 21. Now you've got me all confused. Oh, yeah. 21 years. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard of Mr. Oh, Trevelyan? Oh, yes, Trevelyan? and you... admired his things. They're uh, beautiful. Don't you admire him, too? I sure do. You think do. he's a very attractive man? Very, very attractive. Steady now. You've got a 20-year-old kid, you know. I know. <laughs> I'm sure our female listeners would be interested in a few fashion tips mm. from an expert like Mr. Trevelyan. Yeah. Would you object, Martha, if he, uh, if Bill, uh, analyzed your outfit? No. I mean, from the outside? But I've got, I've got a secret. It yeah. does not cost two hundred and fifty dollars a gross, I don't think. <laughs> well, that's a very attractive outfit. Of course, I'm speaking impersonally. I'm not no, an expert no, on this I, subject. I, I'd appreciate Bill, it. What is your reaction to Martha's gun? Martha, Martha, dear. Let me say first that I'm pleased to see that, that you she's have got some clothes on. That you have clothes on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And that There's you nothing really. <laughs> and that your shoes are coordinated with your dress, not being another color, keeping a long line. I would suggest that you shouldn't wear as wide of a waistband. True, by it's being... It's a cummerbund, isn't it? It's also me. <laughs> it is doing... Well, which part things. is you and which is the cummerbund? Huh? It is doing two things. True, it makes the waistline look smaller by being dark. Mm -hmm. But by being such a definite dark contrast, it is cutting your height. I would suggest maybe a little closer value in the middle to keep a longer, slimmer, tall look. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to go home and burn the dress. And I might say that I, I think your hair is that. very pretty. Thank you. I wouldn't get another husband. I'd no, no, you don't burn this dress. No? No, no, this is a lovely dress. Just change this to a little lighter tone. Fine, so that it won't you. cut you as much. Thank you. Well, isn't it great that. how quickly an wonderful. expert analyzes something? It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm very much interested in this. Are this you, would sir? never occur to me. You know, I wouldn't. How about some of you girls in the audience? Are there a couple who would like to have Mr. Trevia analyze your clothes? The gal back there? And the... Why don't you go out and pick them out yourself? A little lady way up there in a blue suit, I believe, standing. Uh, here, I got your little information on the young lady that Mr. Trevia has selected. <clears throat> Let me see. Uh, you are Mrs. Josephine Lacasio, is that right? And you're a secretary? Well, you're very attractive. Bill, uh, why don't you take over? Artie, let's... How tall are you? Five one. And that is a tiny little girl that wants to be tall. First of all, I love the color on you. It's a lovely shade. Your skin is pretty and pink. Thank and you. color. It's full of the old baloney, this guy is. Well, I want to be very nice. It's the abalone, I think. <laughs> and it is a pretty sweater. Yes, it is. Yes. But... <laughs> I'd like to see you wearing a little shorter skirt. And a tighter sweater? <laughs> and not a tighter sweater. No, no I'm talking for myself now. Uh -huh. We're in a different business, you know. Oh, this is true. Now, now, uh, now which okay, way shall I'll, I go? Uh, yeah, but <laughs> you'd stick to your trade, and I'll stick to mine. <laughs> May I stand back just a moment? Yes, you will. Right. I like the idea of a one-tone up and, up and down if it were possible to, not in this outfit, no, but if it were possible to keep your shoes a little closer into the coloring of your overall picture, you would keep one color all the way through. But now that you have the darker shoes, it would be very nice if you had continuation of color as a little hat on top of your head. Then the eye would see from the hemline to the top of your head, which is a longer line than from hem to shoulder. And if you didn't have as high of a neckline, this would give you length to your neck, again, achieving a longer look, which is the one line that you should try for. Well, I'm taking a longer look right now. 
Well, uh, is, is that clear to you now? Yes. Now, the next time uh, you go out, you remember what this man said, yes, because sir. he's an expert, and he mm -hmm. usually gets an enormous salary for doing this, and he's doing this just for me because he happens to be uh, crazy about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that I blame him. Uh, <laughs> now, you can go oh, now. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much for coming down here for this analysis. Uh, you know, Groucho, this evening, when I came in to the stage here, I noticed a, a young woman dressed very beautifully. I'd like if I could just take a moment, because she's just backstage, and I'd like to show her to you. Oh, I'd love to see her. The only thing Thank I'd you. love to see is a beauty. <laughs> and this is my wife, Dona. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you, Dona. I also tell I wish you, I could be a donor to donor. That's right. <laughs> May I tell you and the possibly the ladies of the audience of what she is wearing? Well, it's a dress, isn't it? A very expensive, oh. very lavish dress made of 14 karat gold and silver brocade on silk satin. It's a beautiful dress, and uh, it's an artistic creation. Now you've uh, you've been in the movies, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh? And what pictures have you been in? Oh, I don't work anymore. You don't work anymore? No, well, I stay home. When you did work, under what name uh, did you uh, sail? Dona Drake. Oh, Dona, Dona, Dona Drake, we used to call it, huh? Dona. Yes, well, you may call it Dona. One N. Yes. Like, forget oh. the L. Well, I remember that name very well. Thank you. You had quite a career in the movies. Why'd you quit? Just uh, got bored with it? Oh, we have a little girl, and I stay home with her mostly. Well, I have a little girl, and uh, I haven't stayed home with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's play You Bet Your Life. George, uh, would you please bring in the questions? Thank you, Dona. Thank you. you have a very beautiful wife, and I'm sorry that she didn't wear a shorter dress. <laughs> Did you see his wife? Oh, she's lovely. Isn't she cute? No, I remember her from the movies. She's so wonderful. Well, I, I even remember Mama. <laughs> now, what, uh, what category have they chosen? Uh, complete the name, right? Mm-hmm. Complete the name is George Fenneman, isn't it? Good going. Yes. I'm leaving now. Huh? <laughs> you understand how you play this yes. game? Yes, sir. Well, put it out here, sir. All right. And I'll see it. Huh? No, I don't think you can Oh, any particular You get four Whatever chances to win $500. That's the whole idea. $200 to start mm -hmm. with, right? All right. The first names are Mary Roberts. What is the last name? Reinhardt. You now have $200 and three more chances to make $500. So we're going for $300 this time. Don't you feel that money inching towards you already? The first names are John Singer. What was the last name? No, I'm not. John Singer. I don't know, Groucho. And I don't know. You should know. I should, because it's uh, allied with your profession. John no. Singer Sargent, a famous painter. Well, you still have... Two more chances well, to make 500, and you already have $200, so. Well, then maybe we should try up here. That's what we just did. Look oh, what did happened. Oh. Well, I don't care. Go ahead. Well, the 300 are tougher than the two, of course. And the well, let's give it <laughs> The first names are Peter Ilyich. What's the last name? Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky is right. And you have $500 and one more chance, so you're in the big money already. And this one is for uh, $200. 200 the first names are Alfred Emanuel. What is the last name? He's been in the news uh, recently, too, in a kind of a posthumous manner. Oh, I know. I just can't. I should be in my living room now. I'm brilliant in my living room. <laughs> I should be. Well, we can wait if you want to go home. Uh, I don't know, Roger. Well, it's Alfred Emanuel Smith, who ran for president of the United States oh, in 1928 day. and was defeated my by Hubert. state. By, he was defeated by Hubert Heber. Uh, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> well, you've won yourselves uh, $500, which means, of course, you'll be back for a chance of two, five, or $10,000 later in the show. Goodbye. It was nice to you. So I'd like to introduce uh, Sarita Heredia and Charles Galak Galaki, I guess. Well, it is, I'd be Galachi. glad to spar with them. Uh, folks, come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you get an extra $100 between you. That, that's fair, isn't it? Very fair. Don't you think that's fire? Fine. Yeah. <laughs> now, what kind of an outfit do you call that? Uh, oh, yeah, but traje gitano. What? 
traje gitano, flamenco outfit. Uh -huh. It's from Spain, from Granada. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's where it was made. Well, what kind of a dress is it? Uh, that what? isn't a customary Spanish uh, uh, outfit, is it? Well, it's the one the gypsies use, yes. Gypsies? In Spain. The Spanish gypsy costume. Uh, Spanish gypsy? Are That's you a, right. a gypsy? Yes, sir. You're uh, Sarita Heredario, is that right? <laughs> Sarita Heredia. Sarita on the radio. What are you on television? Huh? <laughs> Sarita Heredia is my name. You say your name, will you? Sarita Heredia. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Sarita Heredia. <laughs> and your name is Charles Kalachi, huh? Eh? Uh, Kalachi. You say his name, huh? Kalachi. Heredia. Oh, well, yes. He's trying to be gypsy, you know. When did you come to, to the United States? When I was six years old, and then I uh, came You've back. You've been home. wearing that outfit since you're six years old? <laughs> well, well, practically. I guess you just grew into it now, huh? Oh, yes, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Uh, I came back when I was uh, 17. You went back to Spain when you were 17? Uh, I came back, went back to uh, Spain when I was 17. And, yeah. Uh, then I came back when I was 25. Well, what did you do when you went back to Spain the last time? Well, I uh, met my husband, and I got married there. You I had did. two children. Where did you meet your husband, Sarita? I met him in Granada, in a cave. <laughs> <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds funny, but... <laughs> but How, what was he call. doing in a cave? Well, he was living in a cave there. He was, and and you I crawled in to see him? I you must have been desperate, huh? <laughs> Wasn't there anybody no. around in a oh, well, hotel? Oh, uh, well, he was living in a cave there and also working, dancing there, and as I was also. He was dancing in a cave? You know, dancing for the tourists and all that, uh, the American tourists that go they there. They come in the cave and watch him oh, dance? Oh, yes, and I was working there, too. And you were in there? Not in that cave, in another cave, you know. You Such were in a, in a competitive cave? You were yes, that's right. <laughs> was he concave or uh, was he built the other way? <laughs> Your name is Charles Kalaki, eh? Yes, Groucho. That's mm -hmm. a very unusual name, too. Uh, are you, you say you're married? I am. How did you meet your wife? Were you standing in front of your cave watching all the girls go by? Not exactly. I was in college at the time, and so was she, and uh, she wanted to learn... College where? Uh, Boston, Emerson College. Oh. Fine school. Who are you? Very good. Wonderful school. And Somebody uh, out there from Rutgers, I think. <laughs> Why did you go to Emerson when there were so many more other, more illustrious colleges in New England, like Harvard oh. and Yale and... and well, gee uh, whiz, the GI Bill of Rights paid and they gave me a choice and I selected Emerson because it's an excellent school for radio, television and speech arts. Oh, I see. And I was interested and in... And that's what you do now? You're a radio artist? A actor? No, I'm a educational TV director. Oh. A producer. What do you mean, educational TV? Do you mean you want to educate the people? Or wouldn't well, it be better to just leave them the way they are? <laughs> right now, I'm in Anaheim. We just, three months ago, set up a closed-circuit television system for the kids in the Anaheim Elementary Schools. About 17 schools, and... Well, uh, why don't the kids stay home and look at it? Oh, they need direction and guidance. This is where our program for direct teaching is somewhat unique. We have a classroom teacher and the studio teacher, who are partners. You, One, you think a teacher should be allowed to kick a, a student in the bum-bum? Uh, <laughs> like one did yesterday in some school? This kid well, was bigger than the teacher, you know. Some of them have to be pushed yeah. down, yes. Well, do you, yes, uh, do you have any equipment in the school, like a baseball bat or anything? Or? Our state law doesn't allow us to hit them except in self-defense. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, I think that's fair. Now, Charlie, do you appear yeah. personally on your educational network? Not here in Anaheim. I'm directing and producing now. But I did for three years an educational open circuit, Channel 7 in Oregon and the Channel 9 in San Francisco. Uh -huh. Well, uh, did you think that they benefited anything by this uh, TV uh, oh, teaching? Oh, yes. Uh, well, I personally uh, had a speech improvement show for kids. I was called Choo Choo Charlie. Had an engineer's cap on and did yeah. jingles, games, stories. How old were these kids, around 18, 19? Well, no, I was surprised to find that the kids from three years old up to eight would be very fascinated and follow very closely this series that we but had what did done. you do uh, as Jing Jing Charlie? A Choo Choo Charlie. Choo Choo yeah, Charlie. Choo -choo. Uh, you were never Jing Jing Charlie, huh? No, no. No, Choo Choo Charlie. I think Jing uh, Jing Charlie is a much nicer name than Choo Choo Charlie. Well, that reminds... And then you don't get in trouble with the Railroad Commission either this way. Well, this reminds me, one of the things I used to do to get the kids familiar with the teacher 
and the speech development. You blow, blow a railroad whistle when you come in the room or something? No, just give them a little jingle. For example, uh, anybody can do it. You too. Just chew. <laughs> oh, I don't think I can. Uh, do that. Just chew while I sing a little song such as. Uh, I chew. That's pretty revolting, but I'll try it. Huh? It's good for the lips. That's right. Choo 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 gum. How I love chewing gum. Oh, wait, let's start together. All right, huh? together. This is after 13 years on television. Look what I'm reduced to. Here, huh? Oh, wait a minute. I'm not ready yet. I'm, sit I'm sitting right. the temple. Blow the whistle. All right. <laughs> My mom gave me a nickel to buy a pickle. I didn't buy the pickle. I bought some chewing gum. I never wondered what was the matter with American education, I think. <laughs> Do you have a, a job, Sarita, or you just sit around the house all day in this outfit and well, dust the furniture? I'll tell you, like the gypsies do in Spain, you know, the women, they clean and do everything all day, and then after they go out and play the guitar, they sing and they dance. Oh, well, I imagine you'd like to do a dance for us, and I'm sure it'd be a good one, but uh, we're a little short of time right now, so maybe it'd be better if you come back next week and bring your guitar with you. Muy bien. Can, you, can you do that? Oh, yes, of yeah, course. Oh, well. Would you be willing to wait until next week to play the quiz? I'd be happy to. Would you be willing <laughs> yes, to come sir. back and play the quiz next week? Yeah, fine. Good. All right, and if you'll both come back next week, maybe you'll win a lot of money. Perhaps you won't, but, you know. Maybe we won't. Well, Arrivederci. Adios. 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 See you next week. So that means that our first couple will get a chance to win up to $10,000 in just... All right, George, here's the big question. Who's going to try for the big money? Martha Mirror and Bill Trevia won $500, so they're coming back in for a chance at two, five, or $10,000. How do you do? How do you do? Now, uh, you understand this? Uh, you pick a number from one to 10. Eight. That's for $10,000. Now, you pick a number from 1 to 10 for $5,000. Seven. Seven. Eight and seven. You know, they're going to be very chummy, those two, aren't they? If any other number comes up, this question is worth a total of 2000 Clear? Now, one of you spend the horizon. <laughs> Hear that mournful note from the orchestra out there? Are we wealthy? Your numbers were seven and eight, and it came up ten, so this question is worth $2,000 total if you catch it. Modern boxing rules are based on those uh, first set down by an Englishman in 1865. For a total of 2000 by what name are these rules of boxing known? Talk about <laughs> What is it? Uh, Queensbury, Marcus of Queensbury. That's right, Marcus of Queensbury. Oh, God, look. And his wife's out there. Don't you know his wife is standing out there? She's very sweet, too. She's very intelligent and sweet. Oh, well, that's, that's right. You girl. say is very few women would know that. How did you know that? Are you a boxing fan? Oh, yeah, you know, when you have two boys in the house, you have to know a little bit of... Well, the mere fact that they slug it out at home doesn't necessarily mean that you have to know who the Marcus of Queensbury was. Well, you wonder, what are you going to do with all that money, well, your share of it? As much as I'd like to get a Trevelyan gown, I'm afraid I'll have to put it towards the children's college fund. Well, I think that's a better purpose, uh, despite the fact that his gown could do, uh, well, uh, nothing. Forget it. <laughs> Congratulations, and thanks for coming up. There. Thank you, Greg. Thank you.